Hello, we're Christian and Kareen from CK Performance Clinics and welcome to number two in our wing foil series. A big thank you for all the feedback on the first one. Today, it's all about getting up on the foil. How can something that looks effortless be so challenging? Well, because there's so much happening in such a short space of time. You've got to gain speed, keep your balance, trim the board and keep power on in the wing. Yes, and they're all equally important parts of your takeoff. The aim is to get up on the foil in a controlled and balanced manner. We're going to focus on control and balance straight from the start taking you through the process of gaining speed, helping you find and understand your dynamic position. This will allow you to actively control the power in your wing, convert it into drive, get water moving over the foil and ultimately generate lift. Propelling you into the magical world of foiling. In this episode, we'll venture out with a bit more wind so you can focus on getting up on the foil without pumping. To get up on the foil, you need sufficient speed for your foil to lift. The simplest way to accelerate is to bear away. Bearing away means turning away from the wind. Think of it as turning downhill. There are four crucial parts you need to concentrate on. Wing position. Your wing needs to drive you forwards. This equals acceleration. Power transfer. Your job is to transfer the drive from the wing into your board. Board trim. The only way for the board to accelerate efficiently is to keep it trimmed. Patience. Power doesn't equal lift. Don't think ahead. If you concentrate on gaining speed, your fall will come alive and the rest will follow. Ultimately, gaining speed is all about being efficient and dynamic. So let's have a look at the process in more details. Are you ready? We banged on about this in episode one. It's all about being ready. You've checked your feet, you are in your upwind ready position, balance and waiting to pull the trigger. Once you feel pressure in your wing, it's your cue to power up and bear away. Extend your front arm towards the nose of the board and sheet in gently with your back arm. Make sure you point the wing forwards so that it pulls rather than lifts. As the wing powers, resist by dropping slightly, keeping your weight centered. Let the wing pull your front arm and transfer the power through your body and down into your front leg. This pushes the nose of the board off the wind and converts the power into forward drive. The beauty is, with the wing held forward and the power going through your front leg, the nose of the board stays down, trimming from nose to tail. With your weight on both feet, you can use your back foot to trim the board from rail to rail. As you bear away, let your lower body turn with the board, but keep your shoulders facing the direction of travel. This will allow you to keep wind in the wing and control the power. If you pull in with the back arm as you turn, you'll kill the power. When the power comes on, everything changes. How and where you transfer this power is crucial. The way you resist affects your board trim, your speed, and ultimately your ability to get up on the foil. Resisting by leaning the shoulders out into the wind places all your weight onto your heels, tipping the board and reducing efficiency. Resisting by leaning back over your rear foot will push the tail down, create drag and tilt the wing. The combo of weight back and wing pointing up forces the foil to rise too early. The idea is not to get stuck. You have to find a position which allows you to be dynamic, able to react, adapt and adjust the trim of your board. You need to be able to choose where the pressure goes as this will be the deciding factor for a controlled liftoff. Essentially, the most important part of getting up on the foil is staying down off it. We're not talking long, seconds of that. Once you've got sufficient speed, the board lightens as it starts to plane on the foil. Once the foil is alive, it's desperate to lift. 
it just needs a little help. Releasing pressure from your front leg and applying more through your back leg will do just that. Push up off your back leg and stand up tall. No need to throw your weight back. By using your legs, you can climb gently, exactly what you're after. Fantastic, you're coming up, but you can't relax just yet. Let's have a ponder on what you need to do. However gently or steeply you climb, you have to flatten out before you breach a surface or stall. Yes, some things never change. Back to trimming. Easy to freeze, but you need to stay dynamic and balanced. The mind-boggling reality of foiling is that because there's so little resistance, you no longer require the power needed to get there. Invariably, this means that you'll need to dump some. Triple action. The great news is you have the perfect tool on hand. Use your wing. Move the wing forward on extended arms. This pulls you over the board, allowing you to put pressure through your front leg, trimming the board and halting your ascent. Now balance, you can dump power if needed. And last but not least, this is a brilliant get out of jail card. Now that you're up and riding, you can concentrate on direction and trim. Turn your head to look where you would like to go, aiming slightly upwind. Bring the wing back into a centered position. Dynamic but subtle aptly describes riding on the foil. You'll need to make little adjustments, most of which you've already practiced. And one final thought, it's easy to get wrapped up in what you're doing. Stay alert to your surroundings especially once up on the foil. By understanding and practicing your dynamic position, you will transform your takeoff. Yes, it will become easier, more control and less of a battle. A beautifully orchestrated symphony in which you're the conductor, the synchronization between wing and foil. This newfound efficiency will not only increase your time on the foil, but also unlock the secrets to the holy grail of pumping. So get practicing.